Tutankhamun was a pharaoh like no other, a mitre during his reign, but mighty after his death. He only ruled for 10 years before his untimely death at age 19. So why is he so world-renowned today? When British Egyptologist Howard Carter discovered his tomb in 1922, little did he know that he would unearth some of the most remarkable relics known to ancient Egypt and mysteries that will prevail, like the recent discovery of hieroglyphics reigniting the theory Queen Nefertiti's burial chamber still lies here. Read on about the discovery of Tutankhamun's royal tomb and the compelling treasures it contained. Who was King Tut? Born around 1341 BC, Tutankhamun, as we know him by today, was originally called Tutankhaten. It was in reference to the sun deity his father, King Akhenaten, ordered the people of Egypt to worship, which was just one of the controversial decisions made during the unpopular king's reign. However, in Tut's lifetime, his father's rule would be short-lived. Akhenaten died in 1333 BC and at the young age of nine years old, Tut became king. With the help of advisors, one of whom would go on to become his successor, the boy king reversed many of his father's controversial decisions. He moved the royal city from Amarna back to Thebes and returned his people to a polytheistic society. He also added a mun to the end of his name after the creator was under British him. rule between 1882 to 1922 which allowed Howard Carter to work on the prestigious Valley of the King's site in Luxor, where Tut was believed to be buried. After the First World War, Carter resumed his search for the royal tomb and on November 4, 1922, a member of Carter's team exposed the first step leading to the tomb, all by scratching a stick against the sand. By the end of the next day, the team had uncovered the entire descending staircase. Little did they know the tremendous quality and quantity of treasures that would follow. As the month went on, an antechamber, treasury, and door to the tomb were discovered. On November 26, the door, which had remained sealed for 3,245 years, was cracked open. The room was jam-packed with treasures, although the boy king sarcophagus, a large, coffin-like box displayed on ground level wasn't discovered until later on. Carter continued excavating the four-room tomb and discovered relics including artwork, jewelry, chariots, furniture, and weapons. The relics were almost packed to the ceiling and it took the team 10 years to catalog and empty the tomb. When Tutankhamun's sarcophagus was finally discovered, there was no denying who it contained. Within the sarcophagus, three coffins depicted the pharaoh's portrait as well as Osiris, the god of the underworld. Beneath these, the legendary funerary mask had been placed over his head. It was made from 22 pounds, 10 kilograms, of solid gold as well as lapis, clay, quartz, glass, Feldspar and OB. His body had been wrapped in resin soaked bandages and was placed with items to accompany him into the afterlife. Further examination of Tutankhamun revealed that he had been mummified according to ancient Egyptian practice. His organs had been removed through his nose and his brain removed via a hole drilled through his head. He was tall, frail, and had apparent bone disease in his left leg which explains the 130 walking sticks in his tomb. Initially, historians thought he could have been assassinated due to the hole in his head, but this was disregarded when researchers realized it was part of the mummification technique. The king's health issues were very likely due to bad DNA. Although the identity of his mother is still unknown, research has shown that his parents were brother and sister, common among royals in ancient Egypt. Tut himself is believed to have married his half-sister, Enkesenamun. The couple had two daughters who were both stillborn, so there was no direct descendant. I, his successor, wasn't related to Tutankhamun and had been one of his advisors during his reign.
One of the most well-known artifacts from Tutankhamun's treasure collection is his innermost coffin. He's depicted as Osiris, the god of the underworld, as he holds a crook, a cane with a hooked handle, and flail, a rod with three beaded strands, which are also symbolic of his kingship. The coffin was made from solid gold and was anointed in a black resin. Carter described it as a thick black pitch-like layer, but it's now been restored to all its gleaming glory. This stone sarcophagus may not look as striking as the highly decorated coffins it contained, but there's more to it than meets the eye. Later analysis of the sarcophagus ground plan suggested that it was placed in position for a queen, turned to the right from the entrance, instead of a king, which was typically turned to the left. Some historians now believe it was built for another family member, but exactly who is still speculated. Revisiting altered hieroglyphics has resumed the theory of it being his stepmother Nefertiti. The tomb's small size also suggests that Tut's death was unexpected and the While seated figures of pharaohs, usually on a throne, were common in funerary contexts, Tut is the only pharaoh to be seen sitting down for physical activities, a nod to his walking difficulties. This fan handle, which held 30 ostrich feathers at the end, portrays an ostrich hunting scene in which Tut is seated in his chariot as he uses the bow and arrow. The reverse side tells us that the feathers on the fan are from the ostrich he caught during the hunt. This exquisite golden throne was discovered by Carter in the antechamber of Tutankhamun's tomb. Carved from wood and covered in gold, the inlays and outlays use other materials like silver and semi-precious stones. This was a common style of royal chairs in the 18th dynasty. The chair depicts the boy king with his wife, and on each side of the throne are hieroglyphics, which say King of Upper and Lower Egypt. Tutankhamun's Golden Canopic Shrine was a 6.5 foot tall, 1.98 m, container that held the chest of the king's internal organs. The shrine was made from wood and covered in sheet gold, with each side flanked by a protective goddess with outstretched arms, a detail replicated on the inner calcite chest. Along the top of the shrine are hieroglyphics topped with cobras wearing gold sun disc crowns, while pictures on each side of the shrine depict scenes of Tutankhamun's daily life with his queen. Organ removal was part of the mummification process and included the embalming of the lungs, liver, stomach, and intestines. The heart was left in place as it was believed it was needed for the afterlife. These calcite lid toppers were used for the jars, which contained the king's internal organs. Usually four jars were contained in one chest, as pictured here. They were protected by the figures of four goddesses on each corner of the chest each with outstretched arms. Another item discovered in the tomb was this beautiful square-shaped coffer, a large stone-shaped chest. The relic is made from wood and ivory with applied gold and silver and is covered in hieroglyphics. Along with other chests found in the tomb, they generally contain personal items such as jewelry, sandals, and embroidered ceremonial robes. Around 80 to 90 pairs of sandals were found in Tut's tomb. During the mummification process, 
His feet would have been thoroughly washed first before a pair of sandals were placed on his feet, followed by linen bandages. This photograph shows a replica of a pair recovered from his tomb. On each side are figures and arches that represent Egypt's nine traditional enemies, which the pharaoh symbolically trod on. This alabaster cup was one of the first relics Carter found in the tomb's antechamber. The lotus blossom-shaped cup is also known as the wishing cup, as named by Carter, as the hieroglyphics around the rim wish for a long life for the king's ka, spirit. Tut's name is on one side of the cup, and a small figure of the god He is on each handle. This funerary figurine, or shabdi, depicts Tutankhamun holding the crook and flail to represent Osiris, the god of the underworld. The hieroglyphics include royal epithets and the king's throne name, Nebkeperur. An incredible 413 shabdi were discovered inside Tut's tomb, reflecting his royal status, whereas most private burials only included two. Shafti were believed to perform tasks for the deceased in the afterlife, and scrolls were often included instructing them to perform their duties. One of the most ornate pieces of jewelry discovered was this pectoral jewel. It depicts Ta, the creator of the universe and patron of craftsmen, with his consort Sekhmet, the lion-headed goddess of war. In between the two of them stands Tutankhamun, who is dressed in full pharaoh regalia. This piece would have been worn like a brooch by the king. Many other intricately detailed pectoral jewels were also found in the tomb. Some of the other objects located in the tomb included small jewelry chests, miniature-shaped vessels, and even a games board. The larger vessel pictured here was one of two of this type out of the 80 vessels found. It still contained oil residue when it was excavated, and although research revealed the oil was made from coconut oil and frankincense, its use is still unknown. This vessel was made from calcite and was decorated in a faience, glazed ceramics, style. The blue and green colors represent rebirth. The faience style was a feature of other Egyptian funerary chambers, like the Djoser Pyramid in Saqqara. The restoration lab in the new Grand Egyptian Museum in Giza has painstakingly worked on delicate items, like this wooden and gold-covered chariot. The tangled pieces of six dismantled chariots were discovered in the antechamber and north wall of the treasury. Chariots weren't a common inclusion in funerary contexts. Only a few have been found in other pharaohs' tombs. It was more common for them to be depicted in art, to represent the king's association with battle and domination. The restoration lab in the new Grand Egyptian Museum in Giza has painstakingly worked on delicate items, like this wooden and gold-covered chariot. The tangled pieces of six dismantled chariots were discovered in the antechamber and north wall of the treasury. Chariots weren't a common inclusion in funerary contexts. Only a few have been found in other pharaohs' tombs. It was more common for them to be depicted in art to represent the king's association with battle and domination. Tutankhamun's treasures have been on show across the world over the years, 
from New York to Bratislava. For the time being, Tutankhamun sarcophagus and coffins are contained within a climate-controlled glass box, which is set to a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, 77 degrees Fahrenheit, and humidity of 35% at the Valley of the Kings. Visitors can still see Tut surrounded by storytelling wall paintings. Most of his treasures, such as his funerary mask, are currently on display at the Cairo Museum and are in the process of moving over to the new Grand Egyptian Museum.